Today I'm going to be reviewing the March 2015 comic Bento Box. Uh, sorry that this video is a little bit later than I was expecting it to be. Uh, we're actually not too far off from the uh, April box. It should be coming next week or maybe the beginning of the week afterwards. But uh, the theme for March is Cloak and Dagger. And an assortment of books with uh, spies and espionage involved. So let's go ahead and get into the first book. First one was, again, The Coldest City uh, by Sam Hart, uh, Art and um, Anthony Johnston on the script. Uh, again, nice hardcover. Looks great on a bookshelf. It's by Oni Press. Uh, it's an original graphic novel, so this is entirely self-contained, which is fantastic. I love getting things like that in the box because then I don't have to worry about whether or not I need to continue on with the story if I really like it. It's totally something that I can just have just as a one uh, sitting read. Those are great. Love those. Um, it is 180 pages, uh, cover price of $19.99. Again, since it is a original graphic novel, it doesn't cover any particular issues. Um, I am going to give you a little look at the art here. A lot of good use of light and shadow on that. And you'll notice that the pages bleed white, or rather they don't bleed, uh, in some scenes, whereas in others, it has a full bleed in black. Uh, I don't want to ruin anything on the story, but that is also an artistic thing that's done that gives you context of what's going on in that scene. So that was a really neat thing to see happen. Also, in the use of light and shadow, towards the end, there's some flashback stuff that is actually done in grayscale. Don't want to give you too much of a peek to give away the ending. But those were done in, in a grayscale instead of a solid black which also give it a very cinematic thing the way you'll use muted uh, colors on, on film when they're doing a flashback. Um, just an excellent story uh, about the fall of the Berlin Wall and the Cold War. Um, this was you know absolutely the, the best thing in the box, not to discount anything else that was in there, but this was awesome. Um, I'm giving this a 10. There is no doubt in my mind this is something that is definitely a buy it list um, item. So great great choice on that one uh, next thing is a little less espionage ish it's called hit list by Xenoscope uh, Ralph Tedesco and Sami Kivela uh, it's issues 1 through 5 of the series um, 160 pages 15.99 cover price or sorry cover price for the book individual issues would have been about $17 um, I really dug this one it was uh, excellently written story. Um, there's actually no rating on this one, even though it's definitely a mature um, audience's book. Um, there was a lot of like cool dialogue in there. The action and um, and uh, pacing on the story was was excellent. Uh, lots of little things that were in there. There's the gang that's the um, villains were uh, white supremacists. Their tattoos were. I uh, had like lots of little touches that I know were particularly you know of truisms you know eighty eight you saw in a lot of guys, um, so definitely some research in what kinds of tattoos a neo Nazi skinhead gang would have went into the art so that was just excellent work on uh, Cavella's part. Uh, dialogue was very sharp. It was a very good read, very fast read. Uh, art was a little bit cheesecakey, which I didn't care for, but otherwise it was just excellent. Uh, you know, fight scenes and, and stuff were you know terribly graphic, which was you know interesting for this, but I liked it a lot. Um, gonna give this one an eight. Uh, definitely, I think you should check it out. It does have a one on the spine, as though it's the first volume in a series. Um, it's been about a year and a half since these finished up though and there hasn't been anything else so you could probably safely assume that it is self-contained um, the story does wrap if they decide to go back and do anything else with this I think you might see kind of a tonal change in in what was going on um, or uh, maybe even an overall story change as the the focus you know moves to a different topic but like that a whole lot. Definitely, I think you should check that one out too. Third book, though, is Unity by Valiant, uh, Volume One: To Kill a King. This is rated T plus. Uh, it's by Matt Kint and Doug Braithwaite. Uh, this reprints issues one through four of the series. It's 112 pages, 
cover price on those issues would be $16. So kind of like a hit list, not a whole lot of value versus having bought the original issues. But I don't think you're missing out on this at all. This really didn't seem to me to be much of a uh, espionage or cloak and dagger kind of thing. It was much more straightforward superhero kind of stuff set in the Valiant universe. I actually had to put this down several times to look up who characters were, what their backstory was. So if you're not already reading the entire Valiant universe, don't bother. This was just not very well written. The art was, yeah, it wasn't terrible, but it didn't really you know, excite me. And like I said, the biggest thing is having to look up every single person because the, the, nothing was introduced to you like this, you know, for a volume one, nothing was introduced like you should already, you know, or shouldn't already know all of these backstory details. So, I had, like I said, I spent as much time looking on Wikipedia for who this character was and who that character was as I did actually reading the book. Um, I'm going to give it a 1.0. The only thing that I have good to say for it is um, I can sell it to half price books. It's just really not a very good you know choice. I think mean, it was a didn't fit the theme and it wasn't a very good book. But that's the only stinker in the month. The last book for the month is The Shadow, Volume 1, Fires of Creation, also rated T+. Uh, it's written by Garth Ennis with art by Aaron Campbell. This is issues 1 through 6 of the series. It's 176 pages, uh, 1999 cover price would have been $24. Um, if you are at all familiar with The Shadow, I thought this was a really good story. I was only tangentially familiar with what the character was or what his backstory was, but you know, Enos eases you into it and just kind of then takes off running from there. Um, overall, I'm going to give it an 8. Um, it was a very good story. This is volume 1. This series ran for about 24 issues, so there's four trades. Uh, if you wanted to continue, you're not in for a uh, you know, hugely long time. Um, but Enos did only write this one, so it's also an easy jumping off point if you want to try this one out and then not keep up with the character. This was you know, self-contained because Enos didn't go beyond this, so his six issues were completely contained. Um, unlike the, the previous uh, month's Dynamite volume, Miss Fury, they do credit you know, the creator on this one, so I'm not going to dock Dynamite any points on this one for that review. Um, in addition, just like the Miss Fury one, the back has something like 32 pages worth of uh, cover gallery, full-size stuff, so that was really cool to be able to flip through, including what I thought was one of the best parts of it, was they've actually got the sketch covers that had been done by um, Alex Ross. So you get to see a bunch of different things that he did on sketch covers for one thing or another. Uh, there's actually about six or eight of those in there, as well as the other normal things that were that were published. So that was a really cool addition to it. Um, so like I said, that one was a great thing. Definitely give it a buy. Overall, the month was an excellent month out of the Comic Bento box. I am definitely keeping three volumes. Not going to worry about you know the fourth one. But three out of four is an excellent month overall. So I uh, will be back in about a week or two with the Comic Mento for April unboxing. And uh, like the video if you enjoyed it, and comment section below. Thanks.